Well, hey, everybody. Welcome. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Accidental Swingers podcast. This is episode number 52. 52. I know I had to check in and make sure that is actually <laughs> the right episode that we're on, but we are. And special occasion today. We are with our friends Tamparotic, mm-hmm. and we've mentioned them many, many times in our podcasts in the past. We love their events, and we thought, wow, it'd be fantastic to get them on so that everybody can learn about them straight from the source. Right. And part of what we wanted to do also is as we are traveling this year and mm-hmm. uh, and next year, really kind of highlighting some of the events and places that we go to. And since you guys are our backyard, and we're so glad that you're here, we wanted to start off with talking to you guys and interviewing Tampa Erotic about what they do and how they how they do everything and how this all came about. Do we have anything that we need to talk about quickly before we get started? I don't think so. We have our trip coming up in June, yes. Tejito. We're going to Tejito the first week in June, mm-hmm. and that will be an amazing fun trip. It'll be our first time. We're going to Kinky Caribbean. Yes. And presenting four classes there, I believe. Yes, yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 And then uh, the end of June, then obviously uh, nodding in New Orleans. Right. And Getting so, geared up for that now. Yeah, we certainly are. Yeah. So uh, for Naughty in New Orleans, for any of you listeners that are planning on coming or if you haven't decided yet, uh, we actually did a live stream last week or week before last that talked about on YouTube. So you can go check that out on our YouTube, but we're also going to be releasing it as a podcast episode. So it'll come out as an audio, but talking about why what you'd expect if you decide to go to Naughty. This was kind of for people who were on the fence about going. Should we go? Should we not? So we had a call where we just talked about what that's like and what people can expect and hopefully answered some questions for folks because they told us their questions. So we're getting geared up for that. We're getting ready to go. We can't wait. I know. Yeah. That's always the highlight of our year. I'm also going to point out that we are actually also video recording this. Yes. So if you are listening on the podcast and you actually want to watch this, you can go over to our YouTube channel, the at Accidental Swingers channel, and check it out on YouTube. And then you can see our fabulous gentlemen that are here with us for Tampa Erotic. So let's go ahead and get started. Is there anything else that we want to talk about? Or? I think we're good. Yeah, okay. Um, so welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yes, we are so excited to be here. My name is Billy. Um, one of the founders of Tamperotic, my friend here, Brad, um, <clears throat> and then here on my right, this is Kelvin, who later come in and joined us as part of a Tamperotic group, and the three of us have been building this for the last, what, two years? Two years now, yeah. So, it's kind of who we are. Okay. So, tell us a little bit, if you don't mind then, um, Billy, why don't you tell us a little bit how you got into the lifestyle, just a, a quick kind of from each of you guys you can tell us you don't have to get okay. too terribly personal but um but let us know about how you got in the lifestyle well it's funny that uh you know you guys go by accidental swingers because our story is kind of the same we uh, accidentally booked a trip to temptations in cancun uh geez i don't know almost 20 years ago now and uh we got there met a bunch of people in the lifestyle and they become some of our best friends and we end up actually starting one of the first groups there um, called june junkies and april addicts (laughs) and then that just you know become like a yearly thing for us Uh, and then later become where we were going and doing trips together and we got more and more involved in the lifestyle and it's just just you know something that we love very cool. So an accidental tourist yeah, story. Yeah, accidental tourist <laughs> <swimmers. laughs> I love that. What about you, Brad? Um, I'm from originally from Pennsylvania. So, um, gosh, ten, almost 15 years now. I've got to show my age. Um, uh, had a girlfriend and I that went to, it was a regular club, but we knew it was a swingers party, but it was at a regular club. So we weren't sure what to expect. And... Um, had a good time and met two couples and we were leaving and there was a hotel room in the parking lot across from the club and they're like do you want to come join us and like keep the party going we're like sure why not we you know we had never done anything <laughs> like this and uh you know one thing led to another as as it does sometimes with the with the swingers parties and uh we were hooked uh you know and uh i just i love the openness of the, the lifestyle you know what you can what you can say, what you can do, and just be free and not have to worry about the restrictions of sometimes society puts on us. So yeah, that's how it kind of happened for me many years ago. Very cool. Very cool. Um, mine was actually a little bit, a little bit of both. Um, so me and my wife, basically, we were about to relocate to Tampa from Atlanta, and we had a conversation about trapeze. And she was like, oh, have you ever been to trapeze? I was like, 
you mean the circus? You know? <laughs> she was like, yeah, how did you know about it? And you know, she had found out that had been in a lifestyle before um, as a couple as well as a single man. And she was like, well, let's try it out whenever we relocate to Tampa. Well, we relocated during COVID. So, of course, you know, that was not the time to really partake in any events. And then her daughter ended up getting married uh, at the house. So we really didn't have an opportunity to do anything. So finally, when everything was done and we were settled, it was like, okay, let's go to a resort. So we ended up going up to Caliente and um, met some really cool couples. And day one, sharks like in water. So ever since then, we've we love the lifestyle. We enjoy the friendships that we're able to forge in the lifestyle. I think that they're probably the more authentic kind of relationships and friendships that you have. There's no fig leaf. You know everybody. Everybody's dark and dirty secrets. Um, so I feel that, you know, and for us, it's been amazing. Our communication has been amazing being in the lifestyle because if you can't talk about who you played with, how are you going to talk about, you know, other things in life? So, yeah, so that's basically how it's been. And I was fortunate enough to be brought in by these two gentlemen and help out and be part of the temporotic team. So, you know, full steam ahead. Very nice. So only a couple of years then for you guys. That so you've been, as a couple, oh, yeah. as a couple, but you've been in plenty of experience before. Oh, yeah. you said. I mean, I was with, you know, when we were AFF and all of those other websites back in the day when I lived in Miami, I, but I never knew it was never called lifestyle uh -huh. whenever back in those days, or well, at huh. least I'm not a circle of people that I was around. Hmm. So. Yeah, that even predates us. <laughs> that they, Yeah. Yeah. We're only what, six years in now? Yeah, six years for us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fantastic. So you guys um, all met here and uh, clearly had, you know, had, had a good, good connection. And so what made you want to start Tamperotic? Billy and I had, and Billy and Karen, his wife, were uh, kind of hanging out, going to the beach um, just as new friends. And we had met, you know, through SDC. And um, when we first met, he was telling us uh, how he used to be in a band and kind of would run the band and they would do, um, you know, all kinds of shows and I said, well, I did a lot of marketing. I played volleyball and ran a big volleyball tournament. I love the marketing side. And we just kind of started talking. Wouldn't it be kind of neat to do something here locally? Because, you know, we were newer to the area, so we didn't know all the different groups or this and that. We were kind of learning as we went. And we just said, yeah, let's, you know, we kind of just kicked it around a few times and then just decided, yeah, let's try it. Let's see what we can do and start small, obviously. And, and that's kind of how it started. You want to elaborate yeah, on I, that? I think you're right on. And <clears throat> You know, there wasn't a lot that we were aware of at the time in this area. A few meet and greets. Um, of course, you got the, the resorts that are nearby, but it's not always easy to get into some of those. And last minute, it's hard to uh, find accommodations. So we were like, <clears throat> you know, maybe it's easier just to start something here in this area to where we can, you know, kind of control what we want to do, what kind of experiences we want to have, and be able to provide like a an event for people that is both, you know, like Brad was saying, with my music background, has the music aspect, the, the dancing, the games, um, but everything kind of be all inclusive as if you were going to say like a Temptations Resort or a Hedonism or something like that, but bring it here locally in the Tampa area. <clears throat> so that's what we started out trying to uh, accomplish and it's really taken off. I mean, we, we could be happier with how things are going. Did you, did you decide to do that because you saw that there was a need for it or you were looking for something for yourselves that would work for, for you guys or what was kind of the... I think, uh, I think it was kind of both really because uh, there were other groups but not so much those groups in this particular area hosting events. Um, and again, Brad and I were new to the area, so we didn't really know them that well. <clears throat> and the ones we did go to didn't really offer everything that we were particularly looking for. Um, and it was just something I thought was missing in the area. And that we were like, you know, we'll just encompass everything that we want, that we enjoy out of the lifestyle, and that we think others enjoy as well. And we took a lot of input for, from our friends and people that come to our events, and we kind of <clears throat> tried to include those things such as some of the events that you guys hold for us um, include those for people who are interested in that as well so yeah I, I think it's went really well and it's just doing great you know we're really happy with it
We started, and as mentioned, it's only been about six years for us, but we started looking around and we were looking for exactly what you guys are now doing. And it wasn't out there, at least that we could find. And, and we, you know, we obviously went to Caliente, went to Paradise Lakes, um, went to all the, the SDC meet and greets and, and had a great time at all those things. But we wanted something that kind of rolled it all in to one. And we were looking for hotel takeovers. We were looking for, you know, multi-day events and it just wasn't here. So that's why we were so thrilled when, you know, when your event started popping up and I said, holy this is what we've been looking for all along. These guys have done it. So yeah, we're very, very excited, very happy that you came together and, and have started your group and, and are putting on just amazing events. And it sounds like then, according to what I'm visualizing the timeline then. So basically I thought you guys had lived here for a long time. So none of you are actually from the area. I'm from Cincinnati. Okay. I've been here for years. <laughs> I'm, I'm a military brat, prime military, so I grew up around the world yeah. and moved yeah. here. I knew that because we talked about that a little bit. But yeah, so I, that's so funny. So, and and it sounds like it was kind of COVID-ish era yeah. when yeah. you got everybody kind of showed up. So there was a natural lull anyways because no one was doing much of anything. And then it really took people a while to get things going again. So it was, it sounds like it was the perfect storm of an opportunity of time for you guys to get something started where people were really chomping at the bit once everything was opened back up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And, and we've, we've seen such a change pre COVID and post COVID. And so it's interesting. You came in during COVID. I'm just curious, I mean, have you guys seen you know, from your vantage points in other parts of the country and then coming here, you know, what, what, what's different and, and how have things changed over the last couple of years. And I think COVID in particular, and what I'm thinking, I mean, have you seen an uptick in, in, in people coming in? Well, I mean, me personally, you know, I was just, we just went, me and the missus just went to Hawaii in January. They have absolutely nothing out there for lifestyle at all. Um, I think that Florida, We've definitely, at least per, me personally, I've definitely seen an uptick of a lot more events starting to take place in Florida. I think people realize that it can be done in Florida. Um, and so now it's we're starting to see an uptick on people hosting more events, doing more parties, things like that. I say this is the mecca of lifestylers in Florida. I mean, there's, and the beautiful thing about what we do is that we accept everybody in the lifestyle spectrum. And I think that is what we do really well, is we respect and welcome the spectrum of lifestyle people. It could be from somebody who is just, the husband and wife like to go out and watch other people having a good time and then going home and connecting to people who are just orgies and that's what their (laughs) thing is. They're able to, to enjoy that as well. And then you have people in the middle who, who did it. But we accept and we welcome that. And those are the kind of people. And I think that's what makes us a little bit different as far as how we do things and, and our events and our parties. Um, something that we always hear is we would have never met this couple if it wasn't for your party. And you have different groups that actually come to the events where you have one group that's normally at one party and another one is at, an, at, at another party, but they all seem to call us and come to our events and support us, which we really appreciate. And that was by design. <clears throat> Going back to uh, the Temptations thing is something that we really loved was when we went to Temptations, we were just included in, with everyone. and. Um, we at one point had a group of 120 to 140 people coming back at the same time every year and we would just grow and grow and grow and accept everyone and we really like that about the lifestyle and that's what we wanted to do with Tamperotic was make it inclusive for everyone no matter what your background is color whatever you're into you know we accept everyone and you know I think it makes a far better mix of having a real what I call a really good time not maybe it's not the most glamorous at times but you know what you can go to this event and you will get along and you will meet people and you will connect with people and you have genuine connections with people and that's what we try and to strive for to build with temporotics is genuine connections with people do you feel that that was missing before or you're saying that people say I would have never met how how are you getting that information out and how are people receiving that information like how are you saying you're very diverse you're very open you're 
How do we help spread that word? And how do you guys? I think right now it's just been um, by experience. People who's come to our events, I mean, they just see it. And, um, you know, we've, we've seen other people talk about our group. We have our own personal profiles on social media and platforms and things. And I've seen other people talk to others in a group about our temporotic group about how inclusive we are and things. And that really makes us feel really good. So, I mean, I was the single guy in the group, you know, so <laughs> with, you know, Billy and Karen, I was the single guy. And for, for a single guy, it can be super, and Calvin had been one for years too. So it, it can be really challenging in the lifestyle. Uh, now I have a girlfriend and everything, but I mean, you know, for those first, you know, years, it, it's, Especially in a new town, new area, you don't know anything, and you know you you, you don't want to be the creepy single guy. <laughs> um, and I don't think I come across that way. Or Calvin definitely, I don't think does it when he was a single man. But um, that's why we think Tamperotic does so well because it, we're inclusive of all, whether you know your background, whatever you're into. Um, we, we get that compliment a lot, even totally. from the very first couple parties. Like, well, this is a really fun group, all kinds of people here. Yeah, and I think that that was something else we were going to ask too about what the dynamic is. Yeah, exactly. And so, for people who haven't been to your events, you know, what can you describe what what a typical event is going to be like? Meaning, you know, like what are the venues and what are the activities and and who are the people and what you know what's the just the general vibe and dynamic? Um, the vibe and dynamic. The people that are coming are, like I said to people from different walks of life, right? There, I can't say that we have an average age range because we've had different ones from younger people to middle-aged people to we've even had people who are a little bit older. Um, but we it's call always them more mature. More yeah. mature. More mature. The, season, that's how we the, said, season, that's right. the season. The season. The season. Swinger. <laughs> but but the beautiful thing about the beautiful thing about our event is we put situations. We purposely put situations which force people to engage with each other. So that is the different games and events that we work with. Different. Um, um, when we're out there, if we see a new couple that is standing by themselves. Our team, whenever we're at an event, we look for those people, we engage them, and then try to introduce them to other couples that are attending the event to kind of get them comfortable with socializing. It's an awkward situation, especially if you've never been to an event. Um, a lot of events could be clicky, and we try not to be that way. We try to introduce people to different people, find your vibe. But we all have one vibe, and that's just having a good time. Um, the different venues we have, with our hotel takeovers, we try to find places that um, offer amenities that we're looking for, um, hotels that are willing to work with us. Um, <laughs> in, in the vanilla world, it's yes. very hard to convince them to allow us to be lifestylers, right? Um, so, Particularly in an area where tourism, you know, they don't need our business here. Right, right, right. So that's it's, true. It's very right. hard to find those yeah. venues. Yeah, and, it's, and that is a thing, it's, it's you know, for half of the year, there's availability, and the other half, there is not. Sure. So, um, but they they can just expect to have an authentic, genuine, good time, and meeting great people. Um, we vet every single person that comes to our event. That's the reason why we have the RSVP. We make sure that we do the background check and that everybody is who they say they are, and to make sure that we don't have any awkward situations at the event. Um, so, but yeah, we do our due diligence and we know a lot of people. We now know a lot of people in the lifestyle. So we're able to, you know, if somebody has a brand new profile, we're able to make sure that they are who they say they are um, to, to not have any kind of issues. Yeah. That and we, we also hire our own security. We use the same security team every time. And a lot of the people who are repeaters that come to our events get to know our security guys. Sometimes even our security guys have been part of our games. Belly flop. <laughs> we have one of our security guys do a belly flop contest and everybody took his shoes off. <laughs> Just in case he had to run towards something. Like this, you know? Dedication, yeah, man. Dedication. That's dedication. That's dedication. <laughs> So yeah, they you know we always make sure everyone that comes to our events are you know well taken care of and their their privacy privacy and uh, you know they, they don't have to worry about anything. They can come, let their hair down, just relax, have a good time, and meet people. And you know hopefully uh, you know we see you back again. Right. So I think the thing that's important to really lay out from all of that information is that the age range. There isn't one. It is it's just open. Yeah. Uh, the separation, or um, if you think you're, 
you're not going to be included. That's not true. There's a there's a way to get in with everybody is what it sounds like. Um, and uh, I would also say, I think if you haven't been to a party before and you're in the area and you're thinking about going, this is a really safe. It is. The guys aren't kidding. They're not bull. It is a really safe great venue to go to there are so many amazing people it is a the vibe of the tampa erotic parties is so comfortable and no pressure mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and i we have more fun and I, sometimes we are actually trying to play and we end up not and we're like well <laughs> we didn't connect with anybody <laughs> You know, pout on back of your back to our room. But we always say, but it was such a good time because that is actually not what it's about for everybody all the time. Sometimes it's about just going to a party where you can be authentic and feel free. And it doesn't matter who you have sex with later on. It's just about being able to be open. And that is what I feel like we experience every time at one of your events. It's just, it's so fun and relaxing and welcoming someone told me that i thought was a, a, like almost a perfect analogy of our party especially our hotel takeover parties is they felt like they were on a cruise ship at the pool um with you know the games and all the entertainment the whole day and with the dj getting everybody involved that it was like they felt like they were on a cruise and they didn't want to miss what was coming up next in you know, the next game or the next contest and it's just the vibe is is if you can't have fun at our party it's you're not trying. Right, yeah. right. You didn't, you didn't want to come to have fun. Well, and but that's the other thing too is though I feel like um, there's never um, pressure to to play the games or do that. You know, it's it's not. And I think most places really aren't like that. There are some that are a little bit more in your face about it. Um, you guys are tend to not be that way, and so it's it, to me it's a little bit more relaxing, and it doesn't feel like you gotta get. It's not as it's not as spring breaky. Yes. Is yeah, that we, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm we don't saying? want to come across yeah, where yeah, it's like yeah, that's spring we, right. yeah. You know, we'll send someone from our team to go around and ask people, you know, to volunteer for the games. We've even had times where people just didn't want to do it, so we didn't host the game at that point. Yeah. We just went on to something else, you know. But we just like to try to provide entertainment, provide mm -hmm. games, and we give away great prizes mm -hmm. for games and things. Um, I think a lot of people really like that. And we have some great partners that we work with that, that help us with the prizes. Um, but yeah, you don't have to be in the games. You can set off and watch. You know, that's a lot of times. That's what I have the most fun doing anyway. Right. Yeah. Very entertaining. Shout out to Pleasure Superstore. They actually do some some great sponsoring for our for our games um, and, and things like that. But you know, at the end of the day, it's about the guest. It's about the people who are coming at events. It's the reason why we do the welcome gift bags for our events. It's the reason why we do the midnight munchies for our events, because it's them. It's you guys who make it an amazing experience. We can do as much as we want. We can add whatever decorations and everything else that we could. But ultimately, it's the people who attend the event that make the event. And so all we do is we lay it out but the energy comes from everybody else. The love and the family environment and the fun environment comes from everybody else.